5 seconds. The long term strategy for financing our 5 year plans has been debated for long. One viewpoint traces the present day difficulties of our economy of shortages and inflationary pressures to the method followed in financing our successive 5 year plans. Continuous deficit budgets and increasing money supply have, according to this view, contributed to our economic woes. There is another opinion which holds that there was nothing wrong in the financing strategy adopted so far. In fact, even now, it is suggested that to improve the working of our economy, to overcome the difficulties created by the drought and to ensure healthy development and working of the economy, the method of financing followed in the past is not only necessary but should be followed vigorously. In other words, a cheap money policy, a low interest rate policy is needed even in the long run. Hence, the objective is to find out whether such a policy is appropriate in view of the prevailing conditions in the economy. The talk of liberalization has been going on for quite some time and the new interest rate policy which includes inter alia reduction in the bank's lending rate is described and welcomed as liberalization of monetary policy. The changes in interest rates can be regarded as the first step in the internal liberalization to boost our sagging economy. This first step can be the beginning of a new dawn. However, the word liberalization is a misnomer and should not be associated with a reduction in interest rate. It is true that businessman now gets a long term loan at 1% less than before but uh, this is not liberalization. Liberalization actually implies reducing government controls and allowing market forces to play a greater role in determining the price and thereby the functioning of the economy and if that is done in case of interest rates in India as it is likely to happen in many other developing countries it is likely to go up pushing or pegging the interest rate down by fiat therefore cannot be described as liberalization in any case one has to admit that interest pegging in the downward direction does not fit properly into the era of liberalization of economic policy that is going on now as regards the objectives of the policy no one doubts that there is a need for rationalization of the structure of interest rates. Although interest rates are fixed by fiat, the rates of return on the variety of financial instruments with the different maturity periods vary. It therefore calls for a rationalization of the structure of interest rates. It is important to note here that the multiplicity of interest rates has been the result of different types of fiscal and other concessions initiated by the government from time to time. Similarly, bank lending is also characterized by a multiple interest rate structure, namely priority sector, food sector, export sector, small scale sector and the like. The whole scheme of priority sector lending needs to be re-examined. Assuming that the basic lending rate of banks is fixed after due deliberations and that it does at least to some extent reflect the conditions in the economy. The priority sector lending rate cannot be completely divorced from it. It is true that this business of priority sector lending is only one aspect of the broader policy followed by the government. It is also true that economic consideration is not the only or the final factor in government policy making. But the point to be stressed here is that economic realities cannot be lost sight of. Though it is not easy to recommend the ideal priority sector lending rate, it is worthwhile finding out whether the country can afford to lend scarce and valuable resources at 4% interest rate when the basic lending rate is more than 10 or 12%. Therefore, it is necessary to rationalize lending rates to a peculiar idea which appears to be developing recently despite the requirement of the economy to the country is that the commercial banks should deal in short term deposits and short term lending. There was a time when this very tendency was deplored and it was recommended that Indian commercial banks should avoid following the footsteps of their British counterparts. They were particularly after nationalization expected to play an active rather than 
a passive role in industrial development. At the time of nationalization, the difference between the short term and the long term interest rates was narrow. Demand deposits were proportionately more in total deposits, but since then, the proportion of long term deposits has been steadily increasing and is more pronounced. This increase in long term deposits with commercial banks appears as observed in certain quarters to be secular trend and is not dependent on the higher rate of interest on the long term deposits. The proportion of these deposits did not come down when the rate of long term deposits was brought down. The secular trend towards long term deposits is mainly because of a spread of banking facilities to hitherto unbanked areas. Increasing monetization of the economy and the spread of the saving habit. This is an institutional development taking place with the willing cooperation and support of the general public. It is not necessary or advisable for the government to take administrative measures to change this. The other objective of the interest rate policy of setting right the high cost of economy is laudable. Ours is a high cost economy and efforts should be made to reduce costs and encourage cost effective investment and production. The question is which costs to reduce economic theory suggests that investment and production are adversely affected. If the rate of interest is high, the solution which follows from it is that we should bring down the rate of interest to encourage investment. But this school of thought takes for granted the availability of the infrastructural facilities namely raw material, industrial fuel, willingness of labor to work, installed production capacity so that if demand for the final product starts rising the only other consideration is at what rate financial resources are available in order to start production. All companies in India do not pay at the highest lending rate. There are different types of concessions which many companies enjoy.